morning. And we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Emmanuel, God is with us. And in sharing this good news, we prepare ourselves to celebrate it with the four weeks of Advent. We've begun a new liturgical year. We've begun this job of preparing our lives and the lives that surround us for the wonderful gift that is our God. And as we prepare, we do so acknowledging first and foremost the obvious. Our first prayer must be for our, that of mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the coming Savior. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Christ Jesus, you will free us from our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into flat plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us go. Seats for the house of the 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So, so will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. been born and raised as Catholic, obviously our family went to Catholic churches our whole lives. I remember in grade school we went, at least for me, for the very first time to a church that was not Catholic. It was a Presbyterian church. And the reason was that our next door neighbor's daughter was being married and they invited all of us to the wedding and wanted us to be there and so we obviously were, were going to be there. 
And going into the church, I remember genuflecting. My mom said, you don't have to do that here. Cool. Then I sat down looking for the kneeler. There was no kneeler. Double cool. I started, this is a great church. You don't have to genuflect. You don't have to kneel down. And mom said, shut up. Quiet. <laughs> we're in church here, and we're going to respect things here. And it's a little bit different, but you're going to have to learn to adjust. Well, obviously, I learned my lesson there, but pretty much what we're doing right now is learning to adjust because we're in a different time. A new year, for one thing, a new season. And the season that we call Advent, obviously, is, is a prelude to the great feast of, of Christmas. And so things are just a little bit different than they were a week ago. If you recall the readings of a week ago, they talked about the, the wars and insurrections that are certain to come, plagues and famine and these other kinds of things that would be horrible. And what you must do is just hang tight, hang on for the rough ride, and, and persevere and endure the, the tribulations and trials that await you. That was the message from just a week ago. And in this week, we hear about, oh, by the way, uh, turn those, those spears into plowshares. And don't worry about preparing for war. Get ready to embrace your enemy. In other words, an entirely different way of looking at things. And the readings lend themselves to, to not just simply this, this change of attitude, but, but really the change that must occur during this season that we call Advent. And what is Advent? Of course, it is those, those days of preparation in anticipation of the great feast of Christmas. Four weeks from today is Christmas Day. Hard to imagine, isn't it? But four weeks from today, we initiate the wonderful season of Christmas. Until then, we do things that remind ourselves of the need to allow true Christmas spirit into our hearts. And so for one thing, you'll notice the liturgy is slightly different than it was, again, not just simply in the readings, but you notice that we did not pray the Gloria, nor will we pray the Gloria until the Christmas feast. The Gloria was the words, were the words that the angels sang upon the birth of of, of Jesus. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. And so it's clearly a Christmas hymn that awaits for Christmas itself. Instead we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. It's a prayer of hope that God might be with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And that wonderful traditional hymn that we began our mass this morning initiates this season that is slightly different than it has been in the past few weeks, in fact, past several months. As I mentioned to you, we don't pray the Gloria. And on this first Sunday of Advent, we're not even going to pray the Creed. In place, we'll bless the Advent wreath that stands in the center of our main aisle. The wreath. And the wreath itself is reflective of what we are in this season of God's love. God's love is eternal. It has no beginning or end. The wreath is round. It's a circle. It has no beginning or end. It's graced with ever green, green that is there all the time. It's the love of God that is present there all the time. And we do so with the image that Jesus himself used. I am the light of the world. And so we will light the candle today and next week too. And then on the third week, the third and finally the fourth. And so the Advent wreath is again symbolic of what we are about during this season of preparation. And the colors that we wear, the purple, the royal color, it's a reminder that we are blessed by God. And in the blessing that God shares with us, we do need to respond in kind, that we need to pray and to pray that our hearts might be open and prepared to receive the gift of God in our midst. And so the purple that we wear is reflective of the prayerful season that we're in. It's different than Lent. Lent is a time of repentance and sorrow. This is much more hope-filled, much more joy-filled. And I remember again going back to my childhood, looking at the Advent wreath and seeing that first candle lit and thinking, it's coming soon, it won't be here, it won't be long. And then when the second one is, is lit, you're getting just a little bit more excited. By that third one, you can hardly contain yourself, and the fourth one will forget it. You're off the ground by at least 10 inches. You get so excited about what's coming. And that's what Advent is meant to do, to make us excited for what we celebrate. But keep in mind that truly we celebrate this gift of God. But then we have the gospel, which is 
a little bit off cue from that, and that, that theme. The gospel is saying, be prepared. You do not the day nor the hour. Now, wait a minute. Just a little while ago, we, 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 we officially said it's four weeks from today is Christmas. So we know the day. We know the hour, right? Well, we know the day and the hour that we celebrate the gift of God, but we don't know for certain when God will intrude and put in our lives. And we can always kind of kind of anticipate some of the special days like Christmas. But who knows what will happen later on this morning or this afternoon or tomorrow or next week. We just don't know for certain. God has a plan. The plan's a good one. And we're a part of that plan. And we know that the, the object of that plan is to receive his love. And that love is given to us in many and varied ways. But nevertheless, we still do our very best to prepare. It's interesting, too, that, that God shares with us this gift. And in giving us this gift, it's so precious that the church sees a need to take four full weeks to prepare. Now, you might be thinking, four full weeks, that, that's a long time. That's a month, right? Well, it is, but time does have a way of moving rather quickly. And just think about the other things that need to happen to make Christmas so special. We're not talking necessarily about just, just the spiritual realm, but, but just in the practical realm. And what is the practical realm? Well, there's probably houses and yards and homes that need to be decorated. There are probably many, many kinds of items that need to be obtained to allow the wonderment and the magic of Christmas to be a part of our families. We talk about sending out Christmas cards or Christmas notes. We do our cleaning, we do our cooking, we do our travel preparations, we prepare to receive guests into our home. And all these things are important and, and vitally essential to make the Christmas spirit so happy. And yet we are called upon to, to reflect upon the wonderment that makes it all possible, the reason for it all. And that's God sharing with us his son. And so our Christmas trees are special, the gifts under those trees are special. The day itself is magical, to say the least, but all because of Jesus. Remember Christmas, Christ, Mas, the birth of Christ. And so our obligation is to take all the practical things that need to happen, and there are many, and they're essential, and to somehow make room for all of those for the true spirit of what this season is about. And that's to welcome God into our midst. As I mentioned to you, the church gives us four full weeks, four full weeks to prepare. And granted, as the, the days and the weeks kind of start to time themselves down, we get maybe even a little panicky about the things that need to happen. Don't worry. God will take care of things. He always does. Christmas will happen. Regardless of all the other things that take place, the birth of Christ is assured. And with that assurance, we then have the obligation during this Advent season to pray and to be watchful, to be hope-filled, and eventually to be joy-filled because God in the fullness of time will send us his Son, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and as we celebrate on Christmas Day, our brother forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Together we ask God to assist us in our journey as we petition him with our special prayers of the faithful. We pray for Christians throughout the world. We pray that this Advent season may assist us in our task preparing for the gift of Jesus. We ask to be watchful and ready for the coming of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country. We pray that this holy time may lend itself for healing and peace among all citizens. We pray for an end to prejudice and hatred. We ask that these be replaced by forgiveness and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all public servants. 
We pray that they, may, they take to heart the great charge they hold to serve the public good. We pray for all police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel. We ask God to protect those who protect us. We remember the men and women of our armed forces deployed overseas. We pray to the Lord. During this season, when we prepare for the birth of the Christ child, we pray for respect of all human life. We pray for laws that protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception to natural death. We pray for all expectant mothers, especially those experiencing <coughs> difficulty pregnancies. We pray they choose life for their baby. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the, the success of the Beyond Sunday campaign. We pray in thanksgiving for the wonderful generosity of the faithful of our parish and our archdiocese. We remember especially the many who will benefit for years to come from this generosity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We pray for healing and comfort. We remember especially those who are homebound or confined to hospitals or nursing homes. We ask God to give them hope and consolation. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us in life. We pray they be given an everlasting place in heaven. We pray for those who continue to grieve their loss. We pray that they be consoled. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those personal intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. We have begun our Advent season. We have begun this new liturgical year. And may our journey be rewarded with the gift that we all await, the birth of Jesus. We may be seated now as we continue with the liturgy, the presentation of the gifts of bread and wine. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 342 in the glory and praise. Turn to me, number 342. Thank you.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory in his name. For our good and the of all the church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below may gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sac sacrifice may be offered to your name. <coughs> Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this, these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Genevieve, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be Communion song is number 516 in the glory and praise hymnal, Seeds Scattered and Sown, number 516.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. In your kindness, please pray for the repose of the soul of Rita Viox, whose funeral mass was this past week. Our recessional hymn is number 548 in the glory and praise, City of God, number 548. Thank you for letting us pray with you and for you on this first Sunday of Advent. Special words of thanks to our reader and commentator, our altar servers, ushers, our choir, well done. By the way, thank you for Thanksgiving too. I forgot to thank you on Thanksgiving, imagine that. But thank you for the wonderful work that you provide for us in bringing our prayer to song and to music. And a couple of words, a reminder that as we are in this season of Advent, we have the giving tree, which is off to the side transept over here. And as you know the concept, there are ornaments on that tree. Take an ornament off, look, and there's be a gift suggestion. And you obtain that gift and make someone's Christmas a little bit happier by your thoughtfulness and generosity through the giving tree. Secondly, there are 2017 liturgical parish calendars at the exits. Please feel free to take one to your home. And then finally, a, a little bit of an update on the Beyond Sunday. As we've been praying for it these last several months, we're heading into the home stretch. We'll be continuing probably shortly into the new year, but that said, I can very proudly say that we are at 320,000 plus in pledges and in gifts to the campaign. That's an amazing amount of money, all things considered, and so I couldn't be prouder or, or more pleased with how things are happening, and so thank you to the many of you who have made your pledge. Many of you might still have your, your pledge cards or in that envelope that was either mailed to you or given to you. We ask that if you, if at all possible, complete that card and return it to the Perry Center or drop it in the collection or just drop it off um, here in church or to myself <coughs> or Father Greg. Any of us would be happy to, of course, uh, gratefully receive that, that card. And again, regardless of what your intention is, we ask you to please complete the card, whether you're pledging or not, to make that, that uh, a notable in the card. They do need, we do need to make an accounting to the Archdiocese for everything. So that said, I couldn't be more proud and more pleased of what's been going on with Beyond Sunday. Please keep the effort in your prayers as it is going on in many, many parishes throughout the Archdiocese. Have a good season ahead of you, this wonderful season we call Advent, and may the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Ask me to have you jingle bells and stuff like that. Huh? I'll do jingle bells and all the songs that I know. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs>